I at some point during the series said metadata could be its own entire subseries, and I'm just kind of going through and making that subseries as just the second half of this inventory follow up series. Metadata was supposed to be one or two videos. Welcome to like the sixth video about metadata. This is why I said it could be a subseries because it kind of is at this point. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about setting up the default values for your metadata on a uh, per item type basis so we have two swords here and maybe one of these swords needs to have 10 durability by default and then the other sword needs to have 50 durability by default how do we set that up well it's actually not that complicated but it's also not the most straightforward thing so let's open up the relevant classes which are going to be uh, the inventory component first and foremost uh, because in the add item function is where we create the metadata to begin with so when the metadata so when this metadata gets created, we also uh, want to uh, start like setting some values on it. And we're going to be getting those values from the items data assets. But how do we do that in a, a modular and scalable way in this function? Because we're not going to make like a if statement or like a branch or, or a sequence node or whatever for every single potential item in the game. That's insanity. Of course, we're not going to be doing that. What we're going to be doing instead is we're just going to tell this constructor for this metadata after it's been constructed we're going to tell it set your default values and take in a item data asset and then you won't be surprised an interface is going to take care of the on an individual basis implementation of what that means for every single piece of metadata because a weapon metadata is always going to be assigned to a weapon data asset it's kind of a two-way street the way we're programming this so we'll be able to take the item input pass it to a bp weapon and then figure out the values of that specific object we'll go over what it actually means right now let's open up our blueprints again and inventory utils and let's add another function here and the function we'll add is a set default meta data which is going to be taken in, as I said, the item data assets, which will be of type BP item, which can also take in all these other child classes of it, obviously, if it needs to. And then it doesn't really need to output anything, to be honest with you. So once we have done that, uh, we can go into our metadata class. So our parent metadata class, because every single piece of metadata is going to need to have an ability to set this. So we might as well just like check whether or not this exists in here if it doesn't yet you haven't implemented uh, the interface you go into class settings you just add the uh, interface in our case that's bpi well the one we're working with inventory utils is already implemented otherwise you implement it through there so that's already implemented here the default metadata thing uh, doesn't need to set up any default values because it's just kind of a placeholder for if there's nothing else going on but we also have this metadata weapon and here we can say uh, if we want to like overwrite the set default metadata we get this uh, function over here and that takes in the item data assets again we know that this is going to be a weapon data asset because this metadata object only gets created in correspondence to a weapon being created so let's open up uh, that weapon actually bp item weapon and this has a, a bunch of default values that we can set here from just the normal item but then it also has this damage flux and that's something that's specific to the weapon let's add something new let's just set the max durability and we'll set that to being an integer and we'll expose it and then the default value for it we'll just set it to like 10 or something like that actually let's set it to 5 for demonstrational purposes uh, and make sure that it is exposed now that we have done that if we go into the item assets i've got this sword here and you'll see that it has a max durability value now so let's set it for sword one set it to 10 and then for sword two uh, set it to 50. both of these items will implement metadata weapon and they both inherit from the bp item weapon so these two things will work well together there is something to be said about this system that has a little bit of room for error if your metadata object expects the item asset to be of a certain class and it is not your setting of the default metadata isn't going to work but then again uh, why would you do that <laughs> right uh, why would you make this metadata that takes in specifically a durability and a max durability 
try to set those values from an item class that doesn't even have those values. If you really wanted to, you could also get rid of the casting here and implement even more interfaces. Every cast in the universe can be replaced by an interface and it does make things more scalable. Again, I am more of the opinion that you should just take care of having your... I'm more of the mind that you should just take care to have a sensible inheritance hierarchy and just pay a little bit of attention to like making sure that these classes match. If you're really, really passionate about not doing casting, go ahead and set up a bunch of interfaces. I really don't care. Anyway, back in the item metadata, uh, with that tangent aside, the item weapon now has a get max durability thing because it has a max durability function or a variable rather. So we can just kind of set the durability and the max durability both to those. And now both of those will be set on a per item type basis. So now when I pick up sword one, it will have 10 durability. When I pick up sword two, it will have 50 durability. And because of how we set things up in the last video, uh, it should iterate over the entire inventory until it finds uh, sword one. I don't think it's actually going to be able to find sword two, but you'll see that this now has... 10 durability and i don't think it can actually find the second one so uh, let me actually again this is just for debug keying anyway so none of this actually matters that much uh, so we're just going to copy all of this over and we're going to be looking for sword 2 as well uh, whenever we do this so let's just set up a uh, sequence real quick put all that down there and then we'll be looking for uh, sword 2 as well and you will notice that when we uh, do that in a moment we will see that sword 2 will have significantly more durability than sword one even though they have the same metadata object it actually has different metadata in it so let's pick both of them up and when i press the f key huh. that's weird and now that we have that set up we can go back into the inventory component real quick and here finally set up that interface so after we construct our metadata object we can uh, set default metadata as a message not as a direct function call Direct function call might also work, but it is an interface, so let's make sure that we do it as a message. Takes in the item data assets, which of course we get from the item to add that we already have in a couple of different places, so let's put that in. And now we'll be able to see that if we pick up both of the swords, uh, one of them is going to deplete its durability a bunch faster than the other. So you can see this one has a bunch more durability because its durability is set to 50. They share the exact same object type for their durability. They have the same parent class for the item. They're just two different instances of those with two different default values, which both get assigned to their individual item slots. Now we can just move this around, of course, and everything will still work fine because our code is good like that. Now, that brings us to adding new items to an inventory that have metadata pre-made for them. And that is actually going to require us to go back into the inventory components. Uh, because if we want to do that, we want to make the metadata outside of this function. And we just want to supply in that metadata. Because it's a little bit more tricky to do that. So, let's just make a new function called add item with meta data and we're going to add item here and for now what we're going to do is we're just going to copy over the add item into new slots if there is already a slot that exists with the same metadata uh, we can use the compare metadata interface that we have set up uh, for that to just add that into the new slot and stuff like that that shouldn't be that difficult and, I don't, and then we'll do this stuff up here. Uh, but we'll just kind of like copy all of this stuff over and make some minor changes. So first and foremost, we're going to, for this one, take in an input. And that input will be of type metadata or BP metadata. And then the very first thing that we do is instead of just checking, hey, do we have an item? And is that item to add equal uh, to the item that's already in there? We'll just, and does it not exceed the max tag size? We add just yet another bool and we check, hey, is our, uh, let's call that new param, the uh, metadata or custom metadata, something like that. And we just uh, get our custom metadata and we compare that metadata, which is going to have to be a function call. So it's a little bit more messy to set all that stuff up. And then we'll compare it to the metadata in uh, any given slot. So uh, that will just go into that end boolean. And now it's also checking on every slot. Hey, does something with this exact metadata 
already exist because then we can just add it to that stack so if we have like two swords that can stack for some reason uh, and they both have the exact same metadata i mean the exact same durability and the exact same like everything else uh, they can stack like this now i suppose uh, for some items that have metadata this might make some more sense to be able to stack uh but it can do that now if you really want to the interesting bit is we just check if the item slot was added because that's what we do up here if it is not instead of constructing a new metadata object we just get the custom metadata and pass that in we don't need to create anything we don't need to like set the outer to the player character or whatever because we're already making this metadata object somewhere else outside we just have to pass it in because it's just a pointer it's just going to be that easy so uh, when this is false we set that array element and then we can set the uh, default metadata i'm gonna say that we don't want to do that here either because setting the default metadata is going to override any of the custom metadata that we're putting in so whenever we put in custom metadata what we probably want to do is we first want to set all those default values and then overwrite them and then supply it into this function so let's delete that as well and hook this back up so this is starting to look a lot more like the pre-metadata version of this function just with this compare data function call or the interface call in there uh it's actually remarkably simple from this side of the equation you might need to uh, create some local variables though so we need to create a local variable for has found item slots uh, the r should actually be a input i forgot to uh, do that so the item to add will be of type bp item you might need to replace some of these references because they might break a little bit in some places but that's not that big a deal let's see there's one down here as well uh, it'll just tell you where there's an error and you can just fix that so uh, now we have that function working let's set up a chest that will create a sword with a hundred durability is that crazy well not that crazy but it's going to show things up uh, fairly well now, this is the kind of stuff, uh, for the most part, you are going to need to hard code in, uh, because you can't do this on the editor screen here. As you will see, if we open up the inventory component here, we can hardly just say, hey, I want to create this metadata, because this metadata field, you, you can't really put anything into it. And you also can't really make a field in which you can input a potentially like infinite amount of different stats or metadata to supply. So what you'll need to do is you'll either need to make specific components that do that on begin play or you need to make specific other blueprints to do that we're just going to make a component for adding that uh sword and once you've made a component for adding a sword you can then give that thing some exposed values to add those specific metadata and change those on an instance per instance basis so that's why I like the uh, component route to go with here. So we'll make an actor component, and this is add sword with metadata. And of course, you can make this as crazy as you want. You can make it add like five different swords with some amount of randomized metadata and that kind of stuff. We're just going to make something fairly simple. We're going to uh, get the owner, which is going to be an actor. And from that, we're going to get the inventory. And we'll just get the one inventory. This one doesn't need to uh, use the extra inventories. And uh, on begin play, what we'll do is we will just item with metadata. Uh, the item we'll add will be a sword. A normal sword, which usually would have just 10 durability, as you might recall. Uh, and then we will uh, construct a object from class. We'll construct the weapon metadata. This time we're constructing a specific weapon metadata because, again, we know that we're going to be applying it to a sword, so we might as well. Uh, the outer for this, uh, I'm going to still just uh, get the player character. Again, you can make the outer for this the inventory that it spawns into, and then anytime you move inventory, you need to like recreate the metadata to supply the right inventory and that kind of stuff. Uh, that is technically better, and especially if you're doing multiplayer stuff, that might be necessary. We're just going to assign everything to the player character. And then uh, in here, we now have our constructed uh, meta weapon. Now we have our constructed metadata for the weapon. And we will uh, set the max durability to 100. And this is the fun part, right? So we can actually set the normal durability to something else here. So we can make a sword that is half used up, but has potential if you have something that can restore durability. It has a max durability of 100, but it will have a 
normal like durability of let's say 25 so it's not that much more than a normal sword it's less than a sword too but it has the potential for a lot more durability so this is the kind of fun stuff that we uh, can work with and of course uh, those are going to just be the default values because we're going to be promoting uh, this to variables both of these so that we can change these on a per chest basis and then all we need to do is we need to supply in that custom metadata object here and that will be all it'll only add it in if there's room in the inventory of course but by and large, we should assume that there is room in the inventory for that. And now we can uh, get this chest and we can uh, copy it over. I'm going to say that this inventory uh, is going to be empty on startup and this one will still have the rocks in it. And you can actually add components on a per instance basis fairly easily. So we can just say here we want to add a sword with metadata. This one is going to have 100 durability and 20 for its max and 25 in total and then this one oh i just copied over the static mesh let's copy over the entire actor it'll already have the add sword with metadata uh, this one is going to have uh 50 max durability but it'll start with 40 so uh we will be able to see now if i just save this real quick this will have a that's not great i think we never set up a get inventory for the chest huh okay let's do that then uh, right so we uninteracted i guess we never needed to yeah we already like implemented the interface we just never gave it a like implementation for that so we'll just get inventory here didn't do that apparently let's try again it clearly didn't work so this one will now have oh it still doesn't do anything why doesn't it do anything why doesn't it have anything because i added that uh, runs before this begin play and then it immediately clears the inventory oh, it shouldn't be the case. and one last thing that you might run into let's get rid of it. and one last thing that you might run into is uh, that it doesn't show up in the inventory at all and that would be because the uh, add sword with metadata uh, components begin play would be running before the chests begin play and the chests begin play has the inventory uh, constructor on it which might interfere with that a little bit honestly the easiest way around that is just to uh delay this by a little bit whenever a chest spawns in you're not going to be immediately opening it anyway there's gonna be seconds to minutes to a very long time potentially before you even open the chest to begin with so this is actually just a fine workaround uh, that still allows you to modularly say hey i want to add a component to this chest to add this type of item with this metadata uh, and to show you that again uh, this one will be adding a uh, sword with 50 max durability and 40 current durability and this will be adding a sword with oh, 100 uh, max durability and 25 current durability uh, and just like that if we open up this we can see hey we have a sword here that is mostly uh, filled up, but not entirely. And then we have a sword up here, which is mostly used up. Uh, but as we open up the inventory here, we will see that this one takes that much damage every time I press the F key. And it's just taking the first one in the inventory. And this one takes that much damage, which is a fair bit less. Like, actually, it is about half. So that is how you can set up these components to add in specific metadata uh, related objects and you can do whatever you want with this you can make this as wide and as deep as you'd like it to be but this is the basic concept of it and from here knock yourself out be creative but i think at this point we have talked enough about metadata i think we should call it an end for the metadata portion of this and we should actually maybe soon call it an end for the entire series but before we can do that, we need to do something very important, and that is be able to save our data. Because an inventory is kind of shit if it resets every time you reload the game. So next time, we'll talk about that and wrap things up properly.